Dude, check the news. It doesn't matter what channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Warhammer 40k, a universe so dark that even rock and stone can't save us now. Last time we covered the Death Guard, Nurgle's chosen legion and one of the toughest armies in 40k. Not only that, but I did such a good job that Nurgle made me sick for two weeks. So thanks, asshole. But now we are covering the newest army in Warhammer 40k, though their presence has been in the fluff since the first edition. The Leagues of Votan, also known as the Squats. An interesting army to say the least, but I want to get something out of the way here. Leagues of Votan have very little fluff, as they were introduced at the tail end of 9th edition, meaning that most of their story is tied up in this one damn book and the short blurbs of text that are found on their index stat sheets, so the fluff section is going to be a bit more sparse than usual. But let's get into it. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. The history of the Leagues of Votan can be traced back to their merchant fleets that left ancient Terra during the Dark Age of Technology, basically when the Warhammer universe looked more like Star Trek or Star Wars. A part of these merchant slash explorer fleets were massive and highly advanced AI systems that held and stored the knowledge of the League's ancestors, so that the people of the fleet would always have some form of wisdom to call upon when encountering new or dangerous challenges in the galaxy. These fleets, for some baffling reason, would march their happy asses into the galactic core, colonizing planets within it, and developing technology and machines to not only survive there, but also so they could extract particles and resources from forming stars. Holy shit, dude. Over time, the leagues began to change, both physically and culturally. Their people became more squat in stature and saw their machines and AI not just as useful tools, but as family, calling their robot companions Ironkin while the AI Votan became known as Ancestor Cores. As well, the Leagues of Votan were isolated from the greater wars of the galaxy due to their location, leaving them free to grow and prosper at their own pace. When the Leagues eventually emerged from the Galactic Core, they found a galaxy full of war and chaos, a prime opportunity to conduct business. The League swiftly began to trade with not only the Imperium of Man, but other alien species as well, such as the Eldar and Tau. However, this doesn't mean they were exactly... peaceful. If the Leagues find a planet that is rich with resources and they want it, they will take it by force if need be. As well, the Leagues could hold a grudge. Even a perceived insult can be enough to get a hammer to the face. This leads to a faction within 40k who is just as likely to approach you as a friend looking to go into business as they are to kill you if it means they can further the prosperity of their people. Let's get into the army. Oh, they're going to have to glue you back together in hell! The Leagues of Votan, as I said, is the new kid on the block, and that sadly means they don't have a massive model line. They only have a total of 12 units to mess around with. Of course, this means making your army is easier, as you don't have to debate on what you need and want, but it leaves you with less options than other armies. So, be aware of that. Your army ability is called Eye of the Ancestors. Should an enemy unit destroy one of your units, that enemy unit gets a grudge token, up to a maximum of two. Your whole army gets bonuses corresponding to the amount of tokens they have, making it easier for your army to hit and hurt enemy units in revenge for their kin. Granted, this means that your units have to bite it so the rest of your army can hit harder, so you are going to have to be okay with sacrificing the few for the many real quick. Now, let's get into your units. Yes, yes, you rich. Time to get a move on. I got management breathing down my neck here. Your main infantry unit of the army is called Heartkin Warriors, a decently tough infantry unit that is highly customizable. They can be outfitted to be anti-infantry, anti-elite, or anti-tank units. 
Not only that, but they can be given equipment that gives their ranged weapons the ability to ignore cover, gives them a 6-up feel no pain, and or be able to refund command points on a 5+. plus. This makes for an extremely flexible infantry unit, even more so than other armies. You come wide at me again, boy, I'll stick that wrench right up your arse! Your elite units come in a variety of flavors, starting with your own version of Terminators called, and I'm probably going to butcher this, Einhir Hearthguard. These armored lads are meant to be a bodyguard unit for your leader, and if a character is part of their unit, they make it harder to hurt their unit. Then there's the Brokir Thunderkin, which is a dedicated ranged unit that can be built for anti-elite and anti-tank jobs, though they want to be a mid-ranged unit, so be careful with them. Then there's the Chthonium Berserks, a pure melee unit that, although fragile due to a lack of an armor save, are extremely dangerous in melee combat. Not only that, but when a model is killed by a melee attack, you roll a d6, and on a 4+, the model gets to fight if it hasn't already, making for a scary melee unit that your opponent has to think twice about before charging. Your elite units aren't as flexible as your main infantry, but with the jobs they are given, you will be hard-pressed to find anything better. I am now going to start applying the horn! I am now going to use it again! The vehicles of the Votan are not only transports, but your main battle tanks as well. The Sagittar is a fast and hard-hitting transport, with the helpful ability of being able to split your Hearthkin warriors into five-man squads, and also to deploy infantry inside it, even after moving. The biggest vehicle in your arson, however, is the Hecaton Land Fortress, a heavy transporter and weapons platform that will murder anything stupid enough to be caught in the open. Which is everything. All of the time. Because these things ignore cover naturally! Not only that, but when a unit deploys out of the transport, that unit can reroll wound rolls against an enemy unit that the fortress targeted in the shooting phase, making for a great unit to make fun and interesting combos with. I solve practical problems. So, Leagues of Votan only have one named character. However, he does not have to be your warlord, so thank GW for that. Uthar the Destined is a great character to take for your army. Not only does he give a much needed and vulnerable save for your Terminator unit, but he can also change one hit or wound roll to a natural 6 once per turn, and can force a grudge token once per battle round, giving your army something to do in the first turn if you go first. This makes Uthar a good leader to take if you want a named character for your forces. That's it? And that is the Leagues of Votan. Though they're a small army, they embody the meaning of big things that come in small packages. Sure, the army is small and has been cat to the knees compared to their 9th edition release, but this is an extremely fun and tough army that is flexible and can get the job done, no matter what it is. Thanks for watching, and when we come back we'll be talking about the purest space marines out there. The Grey Knights. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications. And don't forget to join the Patreon or channel to watch videos a week early. See you next time.